well trained. Uh, and again, Grant is kind of notorious for the alcoholism. He was always accused of being an alcoholic. Lincoln has a famous quote about Grant where he says, well, find out what he's drinking and get it for the rest of my men because he kept on winning. Although they say that Grant did not drink throughout the Civil War. His vice was cigars. He would chain smoke cigars like 20 a day. And yes, he got throat cancer as a result of it. But Grant kept on winning and winning and winning. He used the fame from his Civil War victory to do what? He became president. He wins in 1868, wins again in 1872. Turned out he wasn't so great of a president. His presidency will be riddled with corruption, but more on that later. Almost done for the day. Here's the Anaconda plan. You can kind of see what it looks like. It works. It just takes time. One piece of the puzzle, by the way, that the Union is able to do effectively, by 1862, they capture New Orleans. Why would this be so strategic? It's the mouth of the Mississippi. But you still need control of the Mississippi. By 1863, the Union gets this. That effectively cuts off the South. Oh, these guys are in the Confederacy. They can no longer cross. They're going to start to be like, you know, being strangled into submission. So the Union, they're going to work their way down. They get control of Tennessee. They send Sherman into Atlanta. Atlanta then is like carved into a path of destruction all the way to the sea. You can see that Anaconda plan will be working just slowly. So Scott's great snake, it works. It just takes time. Don't you like, once they like get Atlanta, they just destroy everything after that, like yes. win all the battles yeah. that? Yes. And they say that, you know, Lincoln gets very political when he speaks. He's got his Gettysburg address that you'll read tomorrow. Uh, it's very, very brief, by the way. But they say behind closed doors, Lincoln said, crush him. Total war. Implement it. So, yes, he wanted to destroy their will to fight. And by burning down Atlanta in that path of destruction to the sea, that kind of will destroy the southern will to fight. Don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about the names. This, is, by the way, is the first major battle. I would say the most notable thing on this slide is that picture. What's going on on that picture? Are they watching it? Yeah. They don't have to. They want to. These are all the wealthy people from Washington, D.C., the politicians, their wives. They think, ha ha, let's go watch the Union defeat those Rebs. And they sit on the hilltop thinking that this is going to be a quick battle. The Union's going to win. The South will be destroyed. It will be the end of the Civil War. Oh, it didn't work out that way. The South, they had a secret weapon. They had a general in this battle who was able to hold the line like a stone wall. Jackson. Stonewall Jackson, pictured in the bottom right, gets his nickname by holding the line like a stone wall. And sure enough, the South is able to win this. The North has to retreat to those watching. They're like, oh, wow, what just happened? So this was problematic, of course. But the interesting thing, look at this. See if you can figure this quote out. Victory was worse than defeat for the South. Defeat was better than victory for the Union. Based on that quote, it's problematic for the South, even though the South got the victory. You're like, what? I have to think. Randall's got it. Oh, but you kind of get it. Once they won, the war was inevitable, and then the war ended up destroying the South completely. Yes. So think about this. If the North wins at Bull Run, they would have gone into Richmond. This thing would have been done. The South probably would have got a slap on the wrist, right? What would they have kept? Slavery. Slavery probably would not have been abolished. That was not even a thought of the North yet. But now that the North loses this, Lincoln is going to bring in 300,000 troops. Lincoln is then going to implement total war. And by continuing this total war, slavery will be abolished. The South will be destroyed. That's why that quote is pretty true, right? There's McClellan. I got one more detail for you. Two more details for you. That's just a weird little trivial side note that I'm sure a historian has written a 400-page book on the Battle of the Ironclads. Do you vaguely remember the Battle of the Ironclads? It's the first naval war with like ironclad ships. So it's not wooden, it's like cannon clank, 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 and they don't sink. So it's like, hey, naval technology, technology changing war, battle of the ironclads, the monitor and the Merrimack. 
here's my last detail of the day. It's the bloodiest single day. It's the Battle of Antietam. I first ask you where it takes place. Where is Antietam? Yeah. The North. That's all I'm really going to ask you to know. That Antietam, I believe it's in Maryland, right? So Antietam is in the North, but it is an attempt by Robert E. Lee to invade in the North. He thinks if he can get a victory in the North, then Europe is definitely going to be on the side of the Confederacy. There's one big old problem with this. The Union already had the battle plans. The Union knew when and where he was going to attack. They found some Confederate with like the battle plans rolled up in cigar paper. So they knew exactly what he was going to do. Despite that advanced knowledge, they only fought him to a tie. So it's not really a universal victory one way or the other. It's basically the South eventually had to retreat. But it has lasting consequences. One in that it's the bloodiest single day of the war. The other consequence is it's kind of like the reverse of Saratoga, if you can figure out my logic on that statement. They lose the support of Europe. So it's a turning point in the sense that Britain and France are not going to help out the South. It also does those things. I'll leave that up there as I pass out my exciting closing questions for you. I should. I'm going to get, I think, at least one more. You did yesterday, huh? I did. Sorry, they're not hole punched. I'm ready to check my video and see that nothing recorded. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, what did you say are the are the? They're all to your right. They, oh. I just pile them there, kind of as I'm done with them. I would say they're loosely in order. Look how organized we are. <laughs>